Hi, my name is Sean Cowgill. Welcome to Club Fed True Stories. Today, this video is going to be all about the secrets that goes on at a Club Fed at a federal prison camp. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Sean Cowgill. I did a 52-month sentence at Florence Federal Prison Camp in Florence, Colorado. Uh, my sentence was for wire fraud, and I did fraudulent tax returns for mainly homeless people and drug addicts. I got them big fat refund checks. I took a cut out of their money, and uh, this was a crime. This was wrong. I went to prison for it. And now I have to pay back all the refunds I got for people. I owe the government $1.7 million. So this is something I will have to live with for the rest of my life. Um, if you are on federal pretrial, or you just got indicted, or you're just curious about Club Fed, today I'm going to tell you all the things that go on in a federal prison camp. But I do want to stress, it is still prison. If you are thinking about doing any tax fraud, tax return fraud, any kind of identity theft, scams, anything like that, it'll ruin your life. You don't want to go to prison. Do not do it. Tax season will be coming up in a couple months and uh, be on the lookout. Be on the lookout for tax fraud. Uh, I'll be doing a video uh, in January. To let people know how to avoid getting uh, your identity stolen, uh, getting fraudulent taxes uh, done in your name, and all of a sudden you go to file your taxes and you get a letter back from the IRS saying that's already been done and you got your refund. I didn't do the identity theft, but I did fraudulently put false information down for homeless people and got the refunds. Um, so now I did my, my sentence. Uh, I got that cut in half by doing an RDAP program and a bunch of other programs uh, at the federal prison camp. Uh, I did a halfway house for six months. I've been out about a year and I got two years left to go on federal probation. Uh, so I want to let you guys know if you're watching this video and you're like me and you were on pretrial or you've been indicted and you're doing searches on Google and YouTube and you want to know what federal prison camp is like, uh, I'm here to tell you you don't have to join a gang. You're not going to be anybody's bitch. There's no politics. You can mix with blacks and whites and Mexicans and Filipinos and we all get along, although we have our little TV rooms and tables we sit at at the chow hall, but even that's, you know, you can mix, you can mix and sit at other people's tables. There's what they call cars in, in a penitentiary, in a medium, in some of the lows, in state prisons. Uh, you got to stick with your race. You got to join what they call a car, like a race car, but hence the word race. And you stay with your own race and they have their own different rules. Camp, we don't have rules. We don't have politics like that. Uh, we, we, we don't shank people. Uh, there are some fights. I've seen people get beat up, and uh, that's probably some of these secrets I'm going to tell you about, because a big one is gambling. Um, so let me just start by saying, at a, uh, at least at my camp, um, well, any camp does not have a fence. Here's a picture of me standing, uh, standing at Florence Federal Camp, and in the back... You might see a little fence. That's because that's a dog training area. It's for little dogs. So they have a dog training program. But the road, the road is just right behind me. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's 150 feet to the road. It was real close. Um, so at nighttime at a camp, uh, usually after 10 o'clock, there's one guard to watch 500 inmates. And he stays in what's called the bubble and that's a little office with a big glass window. And uh, he stays up there all night. Um, he does a count at midnight, 3 o'clock, and 5 a.m. And this is a count where you can be asleep. And he doesn't do that count alone. Uh, an officer from the medium across the street comes over just for that little half an hour count. And they go through the two housing units. And they just walk up and down the uh the the ranges and count the people sleeping um and then it, he goes back to his bubble and he's all alone um 
rarely does he'll, he, he won't make the trip in, into the housing unit uh, alone at three in the morning. Uh, he'll wait till the, an officer comes with him. Um, so why he's sitting up there, um, drinking his alcohol, watching his movies on the TV, these guards, the things they do, um, uh, gives opportunities at a camp since we have no fences. Uh, so when, uh, <laughs> when I was there, God, I was maybe my third or fourth night uh, that I got to prison, so I remember uh, it was right after the 3 o'clock count, or maybe it's 3.30 in the morning, and uh, I woke up to the sound of two or three inmates coming coming through, passing my bed, and I, I got up and looked, and they had these masks on, like these bandanas. This is before the pandemic. Now everybody has a mask. But they, were, they came from the outside door, and they ran past me, and uh, they had some bags in their hand. And I remember I went and looked and, uh, and, uh, to see what they do, and then they all went in the bathroom, and, and I said, this is none of my business. The next morning, I, I asked somebody, did you see some guys coming through here last night wearing masks and stuff? They go, yeah, that happens every night, Sean. So what I found out what they do is after, after the 3 o'clock count, it was usually when they did it, they would go down to the side of the road, and there would be one or two big duffel bags that had been dropped off, usually by somebody's wife, somebody's friend on the outside, and these duffel bags are full of Jack Daniels and Patron and alcohol and full of cartons of cigarettes. And the biggest secret is the cell phones. Full of cell phones, just like this cell phone here, but usually in the box, brand new, unopened. And uh, sometimes they, they would even sell these little fire sticks that you can plug into the TV and watch movies. And uh, so these are the things that uh, you're not going to hear about in a medium or a penitentiary, even the lows, because they all have fences. And the camp, uh, a guard once said, I said, you guys get the good stuff in here. And I'll tell you, so at, at, a, at a camp... Our money is, is, is a package of tuna, a package of carnitas, a package of chicken, ground beef, uh, there's oysters, there's mackerel, any kind of food that comes in the bag. So this tuna goes for $1.45 on, on commissary. They round it off to a buck fifty. Two tunas is three bucks. It's really two ninety. You get a free dime. Um, Things are so cheap in a camp. So for for two tunas, I can get one cigarette. Uh, that's three bucks a cigarette. Sometimes I can get two cigarettes for two tunas. I, I've seen one tuna for one cigarette. That's a dollar forty-five for for a Marlboro cigarette. Unheard of in a penitentiary. I think they gotta pay at least twenty dollars for a Marlboro. And then those guys won't even sell you a Marlboro. They'll break it up into four little rollies and sell it that way. So in a camp, you can get a pack of Marlboro. Now I've seen them go as low as 20 bucks for a pack. Normally 40, 50 bucks a pack of Marlboro. Um, so in these duffel bags that are left at the side of the road will be cartons of cigarettes, a uh, big half gallon fifths full of alcohol um, and cell phones. Those are the main three things in there. And they usually get, the, it's ran by the Paisas. Now a Paisa, if you don't know what that is, that's a, the Mexicans. Um, now, you can't be a Mexican citizen and be in a camp because we have no fences, so therefore they're thinking you're going to escape. But Mexicans who have gotten American citizenship papers, or, uh, or I've even seen some guys with green cards, um, but they're American citizens, and they got caught for their crime, but it was just it was smuggling drugs. Uh, maybe they had a big pillow sack of meth underneath their shirt. They tried to cross the border and they got caught, but it's still a nonviolent crime. So um, they're doing time in a camp. All, all your Norteños, Serranos, all, all those Latin King gangs, all that stuff, you don't see those at a camp. Some of those guys sneak through because they've never been caught before, so they don't have a record and they don't have anything on paper affiliating them to a gang. But you rarely see guys like that, but you do see the Pisces. And these are the guys who tend to run the bags back and forth. So I was told they get anywhere from two to five hundred dollars just for running out to the road, for you know a five-minute walk to the road and a five-minute trip back. 
because um, they take a chance. There are some cameras out there. We have no guard towers. Um, there's a truck that's supposed to go around all. There's four facilities in Florence. You've got the ADX Supermax, the penitentiary, the medium, and the camp. But the truck, I guess they know the, they, they know his routine, and he's usually over at the Supermax. Um, or maybe he doesn't even work. At, I've never been up at 3 in the morning outside on the road. So, but these guys get away with it almost every night. Uh, but there are some cameras. That's why the guys wear the mask, just in case they can't zoom in on you. You would think that they're going to watch these cameras every night and see guys running in and out and, and shut it all down. But there's these laws in the camp that they can't have a tower. Uh, they, you know, they can't have a fence. Um, because technically we're out of custody inmates, even though we're in custody locked up. But um, technically that's what they consider us. Uh, some, some guys actually go to town during the day and they get to go to work. Uh, or they work for the city, the parks and recs, and they, you know, uh, redo a park, build a bridge, you know, clean the highway, stuff like that. They go in and out of the camp every day. I used to go in and out of the camp to go work at the ADX Supermax. I was a cook for the Boston Bomber and the Unabomber and the Shoe Bomber and Oklahoma City Bomber. I cooked their food. Uh, I also did a culinary school over there. That's another video. So for this video, uh, I want to talk about what people pay for things, how, how it gets in. So we don't use stamps at a camp. Uh, I don't know about other camps, but stamps are pretty much worthless. If you're in a penitentiary or a medium, so a book of stamps will cost you 10 bucks. Once you buy it, it's like buying a new car off, of, off a car lot, and the minute you drive off, it becomes a used car. That $10 book of stamps is now worth 7 bucks. Now, in, in the penitentiaries and all that, their books of stamps are their money. And these guys will stack up, you know, 100 books of stamps. And that's how their money did. Not at a camp. Guys, I wouldn't even, they wouldn't even, they don't even want stamps. I remember, I, I remember, you know, because I buy some cigarettes every now and then. And they don't want, they, they don't want to take my stamps. They just, nobody, the stamps doesn't happen. It, it's all about the meat. So if you want to know, so all these guys are, are selling, uh, so the alcohol, I'll tell you how they turn that meat into money on the outside for real. So um, let's say uh, I want to buy a cell phone, which I never bought a cell phone because uh, I didn't want to take the risk of losing my good time and going to a low and being thrown in the shoe. But if you get caught with a cell phone in a camp, uh, then immediately you, you go to the shoe. Uh, if you were, I, I went to RDAP, I, I would be denied going into RDAP. I'd be thrown in the shoe. I lose my good time. I, I, I don't know if they add time to your sentence or not, but it's just not worth it. Um, but at, at my camp, uh, we had about 500 inmates. 100 to 200 inmates had cell phones. It was unreal, especially at night. Uh, after 4 o'clock, most of the guards go home, and there might only be two at the bubble. Uh, and then at 10 o'clock, there's only one at the bubble. And, and, and then we have guys that watch the doors for the one guard to come out. If he does come out and he's going to go through the building, you're warned ahead of time that somebody's coming. And I, I can remember nights looking down my range and every other cubicle would have a cell phone. I'd, walk, I'd see three guys on a phone just in one range. Ridiculous. Um, cell phones are just crazy because they're, they're so easy to get. Um, I, if I wanted one, I go to the. I knew guys I could go to, and they tell me, okay, it's three hundred bucks for a cell phone. Um, you gotta turn the cell phone on yourself, and you gotta pay for the monthly bill and all that. And, and uh, what, how, how, what they said I had to do is, I can have somebody on the outside, Western Union money to Jose's wife, and he'd say, here's my wife's name. You know, uh, you, you have your people wire three hundred bucks. To, to Western Union, as soon as my wife picked up the money, we're only, we'll order your cell phone. You can order your alcohol like that. So now alcohol, it, it, it depends if you know the guy or not, or you're a regular customer or you're not. But let's say I wanted to buy a bottle of Jack Daniels. They go by fifths, and, and, and they didn't know me, so it's 120 bucks. It could be as high as 150 bucks. If you knew the guy, you could get it for 80. So there's there's a big bartering there's a big window you can you can work with there uh, a lot of alcohol Lisa Florence Camp lots of alcohol I did another video about AA in prison and uh, how shots of Patron go for eight bucks 
and they're using a pill bottle like this and they'll fill it up and, and right now during the holidays coming up uh you know after halloween and thanksgiving and christmas and new year's they're drinking they're and right now they're on lockdown and I just, I just got off the phone with a friend of mine. Uh, so I got like four different buddies I did time with, and, and they're out. And now we're calling each other. And uh, so uh, my buddy J Jason, I'm not going to say any last names here, but he was telling me how they're all on lockdown now. And with this COVID, with this coronavirus, the guards don't even want to walk through. So he said everybody's just kicking back, talking on their cell phones, and they're drinking, and they're partying, and, and they're smoking. And... Uh, he was telling me how, so we, they used to have, uh, uh, one of the bathrooms is always designated a smoking bathroom. And I think this is even true in the mediums and the penitentiaries. But he told me there's this one range that's clear. He said range eight has nobody in it right now because of the coronavirus. The whole range is a smoking range now. You just, and you just sit back there talking on cell phones, smoking and having drinks. This is no way to spend your life. Being, you know, in, in prison, you, 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 I'm not trying to make it sound like a country club because I don't want you to go to prison. If you have to go to prison, if you already committed the crime, hopefully it's nonviolent and you go to a camp or a low. Uh, not to say that it's worth the crime because I'm telling you how fun it is in prison. I mean, um, there's fun in prison and there's good friends that you'll make, but it's no reason, it's no reason to go to prison. Uh, it's not worth the crime. It's not worth the time. Your family's taken away from you. Your friends are taken away. Your soul's taken away from you. That's time you'll never get back out of your life. So um, I don't want to make it sound like it's worth the crime because um, it, it wasn't worth it. it. Had I known that uh, prison was in my future, I would have never done what I did. Uh, I was just so stupid, naive, and more arrogant than anything that thought I what, what I was doing was legal and I was going to get away with it. And uh, I knew in the back of my mind, I'm fraudulently making up numbers on a tax return for a homeless guy. Come on. What was I thinking? Uh, so anyways, back, back to uh, the alcohol, the cell phones, and the cigarettes. So uh, let's say uh, I, I wanted to get the cell phone. I have somebody put 300 bucks on Jose's wife. Account, uh, Western Union, so then he'll order me the cell phone, and within a week or two, you'll get it, and I've seen guys order them, and they get it in the box, now they got to turn the phone on, so they need their credit card number, or they need, you know, they got people on the outside, and, um, but you can't call on a pay phone, and uh, ask your wife, can you give me my Visa card number, so what you're going to do, is somebody will rent you the cell phone, give me uh I don't know, give me, give me, give me four tunas and you can use this phone for 10 minutes. And then you can call your wife and get your credit card number. And then also while you're on the cell phone, you can activate the cell phone that you just bought. Some guys will rent out a cell phone for an hour. I don't really know what they charge. Um, I don't know, 10 bucks an hour. Um, the cell phone itself costs about 300 bucks and guys will rent it out. A lot of guys will have two cell phones, one for their personal use and one that they rent out. And, and I guess that pays for itself. And I, I don't know if they charge 10 bucks an hour, but the thing, the beauty of talking on a cell phone is nobody's recording your call and you can say whatever you want to the person you're talking to. But here's the thing, you get caught with that cell phone, they're gonna run through it. They're gonna check the phone numbers in there. They're gonna check the Facebook accounts. They're gonna check all the numbers you dialed, any pictures that were sent. And they're going to track that. And if any of those numbers you called are on your phone list or any names are on your contact list, it's all going to come back to you. Even if you just borrow that phone for five minutes, that number, uh, and if you try to delete the number off the phones, I understand there's a way to, for them to go in there and they, and they can find it. Uh, people get away with it all the time. Um, so let's say I'm in the cell phone business. And... Uh, uh, and, uh, no, scratch that. <laughs> I don't know how to edit this video, so I guess I'm going to leave that thing in here. Um, that's why I hold up these pictures and stuff. So I, I know how to make the little thumbnails and, and that, but I don't, I've tried, I got a cheap laptop. It's $200 little laptop and stuff. I tried to download a free editor on it. This thing came up and then it's freezing and I don't know, you're supposed to pull the video up and 
put it down here and scroll and man and I've watched all these YouTube videos how to edit these guys are all too French click here click here I can't do it and, and here you know I, Mr. Computer Genius went to prison for wire fraud using a computer and I, I don't know how to edit maybe one day I will so bear with me but I'm just gonna keep all this in because I don't know how to edit it anyways uh, here's how they make their money here's how they get their cash so uh, Let's say the guys are selling packs of cigarettes, and I, I give him $50 worth of tunas, right? And he sells me a pack of Marlboros, and the guy's got a carton, so, you know, he sells his whole, he sells all the cigarettes, all the cartons, and let's say he's sitting here with $500 worth of tuna. Well, what's he going to do with a pile of tuna? How's he going to make money at it? Well, here's how they turn tuna into real cash. So... A guy like me says, uh, uh, I heard you got a meat pack. It's all about the meat pack. So if I want to have tunas to buy, people use tunas to buy laundry service, to have guys clean your cell. If I want to buy cheesecakes, I mean, it's not just for illegal stuff. I want, I want to get my hair cut and I want to tip the guy for tunas. Um, it, it, it's used for all kinds of things. Um, so if I was to spend... A hundred, if I was to spend, uh, if I wanted a hundred packs of tunas, that's going to cost me $145 that I would spend at commissary. But Jose will say, I'll sell you a meat pack, right? I'll sell you a meat pack uh, for $100. He, he'll, he'll say, if you wire $100 to my to Western Union, $100 to my wife, I would give you $125 worth of tunas. And here you can use my phone and call your wife to, to wire the money. And as soon as the money, my wife gets the money, I will give you $125 worth of tuna. Some guys went up to $100, $140 worth of tuna. So he'll give me a stack full of meat. So I just saved 25 bucks. Or, I, or, or if it's $140, I'm getting mine damn near half price. So these guys will find, they will sell meat packs. Um, some people will buy $500 worth of meat. And, and uh, you know, and, and it, it's only going to cost them three fifty. They'll have their wife wire three fifty, just you know, to Jose's wife, and then he'll give them five hundred dollars worth of meat, and then they take and they can spend that, and you can go give them a hundred and twenty dollars worth of tunas to buy your Jack Daniels, and it's kind of all recycled. It's it's like money laundering. It's it's tuna laundering. Um, tuna is the main one. Um, I mean, carnitas were like three. Four ninety for a pack, and there's the carne. Uh, there's the chicken it was three eighty. You can use any kind of combination of meat, but tunas kind of the how many tunas for this and how many tunas for that. Um, so that's basically the big secret. Uh, there's also poker tables. I see poker games going seven, eight hundred thousand dollar their hands. They they play that Texas Hold'em, and so at night they'll set up poker tables. And there'll be six, eight, nine guys sitting around the table. You got one guy who keeps the books. You got another guy watching the door. You got the dealer. And then you got a guy who brings them drinks. Just like in Vegas, man. Free free Patron drinks, man. You take smoke, free cigarettes. Because those, those guys are spending big money. And, and it's Texas Hold'em, so, you know, every hand, I, I don't know what it costs them. A dollar, two dollars a, a hand that they got to give to the house. And these poker games are off the hook, man. And at a camp, uh, they don't really let you have a big poker debt. Normally, the guys will wire $1,000 to Jose's wife, their Western Union, and have it on their account. Um, gambling debts do build up, and the guy will get his ass beat. I've never seen anybody killed for that, but I've seen them get the shit beat out of them. I mean, you know, Night of the Living Dead, Walking Dead, Face Bloody, and all this I've seen that for guys that maybe owed fifteen hundred dollars gambling, but but usually they make them pay first, because um, in a penitentiary or a medium, they will let them have a gambling debt of a thousand dollars, but then they'll shake them. Um, at a camp, uh, they don't want that, and they know uh, guys at a camp. You got lawyers and doctors and stockbrokers playing this poker table, and they got lots of money. Um, and it's not that they're not good for it, but they, they're, they're rich enough where they can wire and have $1,000 on their account 
and gamble. So there's not a whole lot of that. Although I never played poker there, and, and I could be completely wrong, but I've always heard they don't let them build up gambling debts. The ones that do, um, they, they usually pay the price. Um, so guys can get beat up pretty bad and bloody in, in, in a camp, but it's usually the gambling debt. Um, I've seen a few guys get beat up for mouthing off to the wrong guy, um, but it's usually not a racial thing. Like, there's no gangs, there's no cars. The little click gangs that you see are people from the mediums and the penitentiaries that work their way down to a low and then to a camp. And there's maybe 20 of those guys at Florence Camp, and they're all a little clicked up, and they don't like can't, they don't like a camp. Uh, they, they have told me, you guys don't have any rules or politics, you have no order and no law here. We, we can't stand it here. But they have an outdate, and you know, they're going home in three years, and they tolerate it. But I know it just kills them. I, I, I know the, the guys at the mediums and the penitentiaries, they hate us campers. They hate campers. But I bet you they want to be one because then they're getting an outdate. But, um, you know, it is prison, and they do take everything away from you. Um, but if you're going to prison, you can get pretty much anything you want. Um, like I said, lots of cell phones and lots of alcohol, drugs too, meth, coke, all that's over there. And they don't charge a whole lot. I remember this one guy, fucking Brooks, we were just talking about him. He bought a half gram of meth and I think he paid a uh, hundred bucks for a half gram. And the guy snorted the whole fucking thing up and he's running around and oh, yeah, 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 he went crazy. And then they cut him off and said, we're not, we're not selling you no meth anymore. But it, it's there. Spice is a big thing because spice doesn't show up on a drug test. But that spice, man, these guys take a hit and they turn it to the zombie and they fall down the stairs. Spice was big. Not too much pot because it's going to reek and smell. And even though the guard might not be there um, right then and there, but two hours later when the guards do the walk through, they're going to smell that pot. So pot wasn't too big. Um, heroin, if they were doing it, I, I never seen it. I seen coke and meth. Alcohol is the big thing. And it's real alcohol, you know what I mean? Eight dollars for a shot of Patron. If I go to a bar here in California, it's ten bucks for a shot of Patron. It's cheaper for me to go to prison to buy a shot of Patron. Um, anyways, that's the secrets. Uh, I'm going to do more videos. Please subscribe, hit the like button, ring the bell, share this thing, tell your friends. And, and, and whatever you do, don't be afraid uh, of a prison camp. Don't be afraid of a low. You'll get through this. Um, I was 53 when I went in. I'm 56 now. You'll get through this. Nobody's going to beat you up. Thanks for watching.